Hallelujah. You ever, you ever, uh, I don't know if y'all deal with this kind of thing. <clears throat> but sometimes I do. Sometimes, because I study the, I mean, I study everything. I'll be honest with you. I study the word, but I also like to know what's going on in the world. And so I study what's going on in the world. The things that are going on in the world are very, uh, well, let's just put it this way. The things that are going on in America right now is not the world. That's just our world. And a lot of times we get so focused on what's happening. I told Stephanie, I think yesterday, I'm thinking about uh, relocating to Mexico. <laughs> giving the cartels about $2,000. Because if I do that, then I can come back and I can get, uh, you know, half, half a million dollars. Well, the fact is, is, I mean, I don't know what's going on and how... The devil's working and all that kind of stuff, but you know, he's working in it. He's trying to destroy the church in America. And even though maybe America has, you know, uh, Dad a few weeks ago preached America's last call, that does not, that, that, there is no last call for the church. There is a call to come up higher. And the church has gotten so satisfied and so accustomed to having what it wants in America because we're spoiled little brats. We can throw words around and half of the people that use these words don't even know what they mean. Privilege. Privilege. White privilege, black privilege, what? You're telling me you're born into this society and you, because of the color of your skin, you got some kind of privilege now? Really? Life, life is not a race of color. Skin distinction. Life is something that the devil, that I think is a woman, <laughs> Lucy <Yeah>. Fur. <laughs> I'm just, that's all I'm saying. Lucy comes up with this stuff to try to bring division, yeah. strife, and separate people from people. Right. It doesn't matter if it's black, white, Hispanic, uh, Asian, uh, American. It doesn't matter what it is. All he wants to do is separate. That's, right. That's all he cares about. He just wants to separate. And he's relentless with it. Yeah. CNN is relentless. Let me let you in on a little secret. Fox News is relentless. I know that a lot of people are, uh, Fox News is more conservative, but see, here's the thing. We're supposed to be mature saints. And we're supposed to know exactly what's going on when it's going on. And we have to be able to understand and realize there is a real devil at work trying to take down a real church. And if you want to know what's going on, just go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis is a picture of Jesus and the church. The book of Genesis... Adam had his bride and God said it's not good that man should be alone. Now I don't have any, I have no idea why he said that but I can tell you this. If you've ever 
dealt with a single man. And he's single. He lives in his own bachelor pad. That's what God had in the book of Genesis. And it would, it, at, at first, God had everything. God looked at everything. He looked at all of it. And he said, oh, my God. Oh, myself. This is good. But after coming and, 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 and uh, going back and forth and dealing with man, at some point he said, whoa, wait. Hold on just a minute. It's not good that man should be alone. The cows eat grass. The fish swim in the water. The birds fly in the sky. But man... You leave him long enough on his bachelor pad, there's trash everywhere, <laughs> dirty dishes. He doesn't pick up after himself. He goes and takes a shower, and his clothes are all over the floor. And God says, oh, wait, hold on. It is not good that man should be alone. So God makes, whoa, man. Whoa. Whoa. Stop. That's not sanitary. Stop that. Quit acting like that. Quit doing that. Whoa, man. And it's an interesting thing that When the devil comes in, he comes in so subtly, we don't even see him doing it. We don't even get it. Like, for instance, the feminist movement. Listen, everybody knows that boys rule and girls drool. <laughs> That's a joke. I have to explain myself because if, if my wife after 30 years does not get my jokes, then I know that y'all don't either. She's like, honey, you have to explain yourself. Okay, baby. All right. All right. Okay. But we act like a bunch of toddlers on the playground. Boys against girls. Boys and girls are different. We're made for different purposes. We're, we're just different. Uh, Peter called... Women, the weaker vessel. That's in strength. Not in everything else. There's Stephen. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the weaker vessel is simply in strength. Okay, all right. Well, uh, if you don't believe that, then just take, just, just, just do what all the liberals really want to do, and it's going to take them, I don't know how many years it'll take them to figure it out. I mean, I'm not, when I say liberal, I mean, I'm like, the, I'm talking about far, far left. Just let them put uh, prison, as far as prison goes, let them put the males and the females and see who comes out on top. At some point, somebody with enough sense is going to have to say, hey, we're just different. Right. Now, if you put them in an office space, where they have, it's got to have to do with cunning. Now, women are not the weaker vessel. He was only talking about one thing. I mean, how would you like to read the Bible as a woman? And find out that you've got to submit your husband, all he's got to do is love you. But you, you got to submit and respect. Let me let y'all in on a secret. This is the secret. Paul, Paul said this. He said, he said I, I was, when I was talking to you, I wasn't just talking about uh, husbands and wives. I was talking about the church. And every one of us, Every one of us, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, 
Somebody has to submit to somebody. And if you're the boss, if you're the man, and if you're the man, that can be woman. Like, for instance, some of you have your own businesses. Like, for instance, Tina. Tina has her own business. She's the man. Well, what's her job? Her job is to love and the people under her, it's their job to submit and respect. To submit and respect. Now, it's not Tina's job to make them submit and respect her. It's her job to love. So if you're the man, then it's your job to love. It's not your job to make your wife Submit and respect you. Because if you will love her the way Christ loved the church. But now see, here's the thing. That messes up a lot of the doctrine that goes on because now the woman, do you mean the woman don't have to love the husband? What's going on with that? He said the same thing. Submit and respect is love. The first before that says submitting yourselves one to another in, in the fear of God. Three words. In the fear. In the fear. The fear. Okay, four words. <laughs> Y'all are going to have to help me on this. I'm going to need you. I'm going to need you. But in the fear of God. That means that you don't answer to your husband. You answer to God. That means you don't answer to your wife. You answer to God. But that's not all he said. He went on and he talked about children, honor. That was the first commandment with promise. Right. If you honor mama and daddy, right. you'll live long right. on the earth. Right. It was the first commandment with a promise attached to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, God said, love the Lord your God with all your heart. That was the first but there was no promise attached with that one. But then, he said, honor your father and mother. And there was an attachment with that one that it, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Now see, here's the thing. Does mama and daddy have the ability to make you uh, prosperous? To make you have wealth to be, for things to be well with you and that things will go well for you in life and that you'll live longer? Does mommy and daddy have the ability to do that? No. 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 What you're thinking about is American mentality where some people have money and what you're thinking about is money. Money does have the ability temporarily to make it look that way. But there's a spiritual force that God put in place. It doesn't matter if you had a mama. It don't matter if you had a daddy. It don't matter if you had a good one, a bad one. It doesn't matter what you have. I am the provider of the body. Jesus said, I am the savior of the body. And if I, whatever you need and whatever it takes, I don't care if you're in America. I don't care if you're in Africa. I don't care if you're in China. I don't care if you're in North Korea or North Vietnam or, or in Vietnam. I don't care where you are. I am God. I am everything that you need. And by doing that, he's the one that's in charge. When you put your relationship and your, your, uh, your values and everything that God wants you to be, and you put your trust in that, then that's where your supply comes from. 
not mama and daddy. Now, mama and daddy is great. Wonderful. You can have a good mama and a good daddy, and to, if you have a good mama and a good daddy, then you're, very, you're, you're privileged. See, that's a word that people don't like. They don't like that word. You know why people don't like that word, privileged? Anybody want to know why they don't like that word? Because the media tells us what our words mean now. We don't go to the dictionary to find out what that means. White privilege. Black privilege. Hispanic privilege. No, those are people trying to get votes. Mature Christians don't fall for that junk. They know what's going on in the world and they know that that person is not a person that's not a man or a woman of God and therefore I am not voting, I am not putting my, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on them. And if that means I don't vote, we're called, the church in America is called Protestants. We're Protestant. You know why? We're protest. We, we protest. We're protest unts. We protest. We'll play games. You know what the, you, you, you know what the number one, one word is that people can use against you nowadays? Racist. If somebody calls you a racist, it's like they put a mark on you. Y'all remember the, 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 the uh, scarlet letter? Y'all are awesome in this place. <laughs> Mighty twins. And we let the world tell us what to think. I don't want people around me that just listen to what they say. They say. They say. You know what Willie Nelson said about they? Willie Nelson said, if I could have found that son of a bitch a long time ago, I'd have killed him. I didn't, Willie Nelson said that, I didn't say that. I just quoted him. See, y'all going to have to pray for me. Don't let Pastor Andy cuss in the pulpit today. They say. There's always going to be they sayers in your life. Apostle David preached a message way, way, way back when. And this has got nothing to do with my message, so I took some notes this morning in case you wanted to know. I got some. Preached a message a long time ago about the horrible pit. In the book of Psalms, David, he, saw, he said, I was delivered into a horrible pit. You know what that horrible pit translates into? Echo chamber. In other words, I live with the voices of the past. I live with the voices that just keep echoing to me and echoing to me and saying it over and over and over and over until I forget that God has called me. And me and, and my, God and myself make the majority because if he said it, it can't be undone. The echo chamber. What do you think the media is? They just keep saying it over and over and over and over and over until finally somebody says, well, that's racist. There's a white piece of paper on the floor. Well, that's racist. It's white. Well, there's a black piece of paper right there. Well, that's racist. That's black. Somebody's got to say it. Somebody's got to tell the truth about what they're trying to shove down people's throats. And when I say they, it's a tiny majority. It's... Let me let y'all in on another little secret. White folks don't hate black folks. Black folks don't hate white folks. As a matter of fact, we love each other so much, 
We're marrying each other. I've got mixed families and different, you know. And man, you talk about some beautiful kids. Oh, man. See, I've always had this, I've always had this, this uh, skin that just burns easy. And so I get out in the sun and it, it just like blisters and stuff like that. I ain't never, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's like something that I always heard. Black folks can't get a sunburn. Is that true or is that not true? You can be burned. It don't look the same. It's kind of like, it's kind of like ash. I get it too. You just can't tell it. Because I'm, I'm about the same color as ash. You just can't tell. I mean, you know, I, 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 can, I can go for weeks without putting any lotion on my skin. You might as well laugh because it's true. But I'm just telling you what's going on in this world and how the devil is trying to separate people. And that's just what he's using. And I'm using, the reason I'm using, the only reason I'm using that is because that's the one that's the most prevalent and that's the one that you, but th there's others. Yeah. I mean, there's like, okay, for instance, well, there's, there's, there's uh, male and female. There's black and white. Um, you know, then there's, what's another one? Can't think of anything right off the top of my head. Y'all are supposed to be helping me, twins. <laughs> but the thing is, is there's always a way to divide. The devil is always looking for a way to divide people one against the other. It wouldn't matter. What if we all had the same color skin? You know what we'd divide over? Eye color. You know why? Because we divide. It came with Adam in the fall of the garden. And that's what happens. It's a fallen nature. And as Christians, we shouldn't do that. That's not how we live our life. That's not the way we live. We don't play favorites. You know, one of the worst things that you can, you, you, you can walk into is a, when you go to, like a, to a place of work. And they are playing favorites. And you're never going to get to the top no matter how hard you work. Because they play favorites. And you might love this person. You might think that they're the best. But you can't. If you're, in, if you're in charge, you're in charge to love everybody, not just the one person that you like the best. You're in charge of loving everybody equally. That's why God doesn't put that many people in leadership. Now, people can exalt themselves to the place of leadership, but God doesn't put them there because they like to play favorites. And they can't, and, and the fact that they play favorites means that they can't see the gifts and the abilities that are in individuals because they just don't like that particular person. Hallelujah. Jesus is still alive. Death, what, what you, the spiritual death has lost its victory. It's not supposed to be living in us. We're not supposed to be separating. But it's, sometimes it can, be, it can be a challenge to not let that. You know, the KKK. I, uh, anybody ever heard of this organization called the KKK? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? When I was growing up, I heard so many stories about the KKK. I've never met anybody in the KKK. I, I, as a matter of fact, I, I don't even know what. I know that it's, uh, is it supposed to be Greek letters or something like that? But you know they use the Bible to to undergird their belief system. Just like many churches. <laughs> One of the most dumbest ones I ever heard. I'm just going to let y'all in on this. It's from James. 
uh, in, let's see, hold on. In God is no darkness at all. In him is light and no darkness at all. It's a, yeah, did y'all know that? Y'all, have y'all, Fred, did you know that? That's pretty dumb. Not that you knew that. Not that you do. But that's, that, that's a, I mean, that, that's how, that's how uh, ignorant you can be. Did you know that Hitler, Hitler rose to power? We already had one world war. We already had one. Hitler rose to power because he hated one group. That was the Jews. And what he did was he made this group lower than his group. It's the whole premise behind critical race theory. They're all on the same highway. They just hadn't got to their destination yet. Anytime, anytime, please hear me, anytime, you lower, you lower somebody else. You lower somebody else to be smaller than you or more insignificant than you and not as important as you, you're on the same path. It doesn't matter if it's CRT, the KKK, or Hitler, Nazis. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. You're all on the same highway, headed in the same direction. You just hadn't got to the end yet. Well, Pastor Andy, I'm not guilty of that. I'm not guilty of that. Okay, all right. Well, think back to high school, junior high. Was there somebody that you didn't like? didn't have to be because of the color of their skin. These are just things that I'm using because these are things that are out there in the world right now that are very prevalent. But what about, what about the, pe- the person that you just didn't like because you didn't like them? Maybe they were rich and you weren't. Maybe they were poor. Remember Jesus said, I started with this, Jesus said, be careful how you judge. Now, most of us would say, no, I wouldn't. I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't kill a million people. But if you'll look down on a brother or sister in Christ, if you'll esteem them as less important than you, if you think for one minute that you're more valuable, why? Because you've got a gift? You think you're more important than that? You think that, 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 that because God has given you a gift that, put, that puts you in front of people, you're better than somebody else? You're on the same place. You're on the same road. You just haven't got to the end yet. Be careful how you judge. Now, if we had that in mind, we would look at people a lot different. We would look at life a lot different. We would look at ourselves a lot different. Because in spiritual death, we're all capable of all types. If there's anybody, just go look at the worst thing that you can possibly, go look it up on YouTube. And if you can, whatever the worst thing is, you find that and you're capable of it. It's just a matter of who taught you. Some, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I think I'll be racist today. I think I'll be, I think I'll be a feminist today. I think I'll be a misogynist today. No, that doesn't happen. There's a thought process that has to take place. And the, 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 the woman has to make uh, in, in her mind to become a feminist of today. Now, I'm not saying that the feminist movie was totally bad. Women needed to have rights. I'm not saying that. It's totally not what I'm saying. But at some point, it all just becomes anti-something. 
feminist, the feminist move has become anti-man. The BLM move has just become anti-white. Oh, I felt chills on that one. I don't care. Well, I, I don't care right now. <laughs> As mature saints, we should know better. We should act better. We should know what love is. It's been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, and we should know better. Somebody should have been somebody should have been standing up to the KKK and the Aryan nation a long time before it ever got to where it got. And it should have been the church. And the church ought to stand up against anything that says that, that acts that way, that does anything. I, I need to read something. So that y'all know that I'm just not coming up with this. Whew, good Lord, Andy, man. Did you have to say all that? I didn't start this, you did. No, wait a minute, hold on. <sighs> y'all ever have a conversation with yourself? Sometimes I have a conversation with myself. And sometimes I wait in the next room. Because I ain't all there. I know it. Somebody's got to say it. Somebody's got to. I mean, sometimes I just follow myself because I want to I wanna be behind a good leader. I'm just saying. And sometimes I step out from behind myself because uh, I'm getting shot at. <laughs> and I don't want to get hit. Oh, hallelujah. Man, I was going to talk about, oh, so. Ephesians, Ephesians, Ephesians 5. It is a shame. That the church has let things get so far. It is a shame that the church has let racism get so far. You want to look at who's responsible? To fix it? I don't want to say for who, because, you know, I mean, a lot of us are so young. We had nothing to do with racism. I mean, you know, Fred and I, we're young. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but we were way too young. This, this thing started before we ever got here. But we are responsible to, 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 to do our part to fix it. Because this is a world we were handed. And if we don't fix it, we're not doing what God called us to do. God was in Christ. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Now Christ is in the church trying to do the same thing if we'll let him. But if you're going to get cut, somebody's going to call you names. We'll read. Let's see what it, let's see what uh, uh, Paul had to say about this. I don't know why. I went this direction because this was not the direction. I was going to go talk about fellowship. I've got it written down, fellowship. I've got it written right there, fellowship. Fellowship seems like a good message. But see, I was taught by somebody. I was taught by different people. I was taught by Apostle David, Brother Hagen, um, Different ones. And you can say, oh, this ain't this doesn't matter. No, the Holy Ghost wouldn't give this to me because I didn't have, I, I mean, I got notes right here where I hadn't, if, if, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue, it's a deal. Yeah. 
Don't tell me it's not because the Holy Ghost wouldn't take me this way. And that's what I learned. That's how I learned to preach. You know, Dad talks about a lot of times, open your mouth and let her fly. The old timers knew something about following the Holy Ghost. And that was one thing that was going on during the Holy Ghost movement, uh, preach the word and flow in the Holy Ghost. This is the word. I've not told you anything that's not in the word. And I'm telling you to be on guard and don't let that stuff get in your head. Because the devil is good. He is, you know, he's Lucy. Fur. She is Lucy. Fur. The devil is not his name. It's a job description. Devil is Diablo. Made up of two Greek words. Dia and Ablos. Dia means to penetrate. Abelos means to throw. In other words, he just keeps throwing it and throwing it and throwing it and throwing it and throwing it until it penetrates from one end to the other. And he's relentless. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't go to sleep. It's what he does. He's relentless. And Paul is talking to people that are supposed to be mature in the book of Ephesians. And he, t- he, he goes in, he says, man, let me tell you guys something. He builds them up. He tells them exactly who they are in Christ Jesus. You have been chosen. That word chosen is, means to take out of one's self. Which means we are a word taken out of the word. Some people wonder and try to figure out why are things not working? Because you're working against the word that's in you. How come things don't work in my life like they work in something? Because you're working against the word that's in you. That word was taken out of the word. You were chosen by God from the foundation of the world to do something. So in Ephesians, the 11th verse. And I have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. When's the last time you ever, when's the last time you reproved the unfruitful works of darkness? When's the last time somebody made a racist comment in your presence and you said, wait a minute, hold up, buddy. I don't care what color your skin is and I don't care if you, I don't care who you heard that from. I don't care if you heard it on CNN or Fox News, that's racist. And call it out really for what it is. Reprove. See, we don't know how to reprove. We know how to, uh, we know how to, to get on uh, Facebook and talk about and look at and say and agree with the popular opinion. But nobody wants to reprove. The anti-police movement. Defund the police. Tell me, how's that going to work? That's the dumbest thing. That's a doctrine of demons. Defund the police. People ignore facts. How do they ignore facts? There's a devil behind it. A wind of doctrine. Last time I preached. Last time I preached. Wind of doctrine. Slight of men. Cunning craftiness. Whereby what? They lie in wait to deceive. In the fourth chapter, he told you how he was doing it. In the sixth chapter, he told you who was doing it. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Principalities. Those are the ones that put a principle in place. A principality, a principle. In other words, they know, the devil knows, he knows how to separate human beings. And if he can do it with the color of skin, that's how he'll do it. It's a principle. He knows if he can separate, he can destroy. How can two walk together except they be agreed? 
If he can separate it, he can destroy it. What's he after in America? You think he's after, he's after destroying America? No, he's not after America. He's after the church. I'm not trying to be political, and I'm not political. The devil hits me, you shouldn't be so political. Somebody's got to be, because that's who's coming against the church. And I can tell you this, it's not just what's coming against the church. They're going to try to dictate to the church what the church can say about Jesus, about God, about the Word of God. They are trying to get it to the place that you can't say anything. That's why I'm passionate about it. That's why it comes off as political sometimes. It ain't got nothing to do with politics. Those are a bunch of dummies. They just, they've just got their operation. I can tell you this, every single one of them, they had this guy up there, uh, the, the old guy, and I felt sorry for the old guy because he did something stupid. It had something to do with, uh, with, uh, it had something to do with uh, parents and they had, and he, and he was wrong to do it. But I thought to myself, when these guys were raking this guy over the coals, and I thought to myself, you know the camera's on you. I wonder how you would talk to him if the camera wasn't on you. You're just putting on a show, and these are Republicans. Jesus didn't have nothing to do with publicans. Republicans are not going to save this nation. What if this nation is going down? This nation is going down. Whether you like it, whether you realize it, whether you want to admit it, this nation is going down. Why? Because we're divided. A house, Jesus said this, I'm not saying this, I'm not prophesying to you, I'm telling you America is going down. Why? Because a house divided against itself, Jesus said this, can not stand. America is going to fall. It's just a matter of time, it's just a matter of who, and a matter of when America is going down. We're divided. And who knows what it's going to look like when it's over and done. But I can promise you this. The church will never go down. The church will never be that, 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 that nation that is divided. Because Jesus is coming. Jesus is the head of the church. I don't care if somebody says they're a part of the church. It doesn't matter what somebody says. They get up and they say a little prayer. Please stand for the reading of the word. And, blah, 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 and, blah, 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 and then go into their message. And, they, and, they're, and they're brilliant orators. They sound good. They got that good voice that I would like to have. And if I had that voice, I'd sing to you all the time. I'd sing to my wife all the time. I hate that y'all miss that my singing, Fred especially. I know how much you love my singing. I hate that you miss my singing on Wednesday night. <clears throat> they didn't get it on. They didn't get it on. Uh, uh, they, it didn't go out over the internet. So I hate that. But these people come in as she as uh, wolves. In sheep's clothing. What do you think Jude was talking about? They look like you. They act like you. This thing is not as simple as what you think. I need to read this before I go. How do we get out of this mess? How do we get out? What do we got to do? To get out. How do I keep from being deceived? How do I get out of for, uh, to, to, uh, forsaking my own mercy? You know, Psalm says, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. There's mercy. 
But if you forsake, if you observe, if you, if you give heed to all the things that are going on around you, the prince of the power of the air. He's, Lucy has a lot of power nowadays. Used to, Lucy had to send somebody to say something. Now all Lucy's got to do is just, you turn your TV on. There's more going on than what you think in the spirit. Principalities, powers, rulers, of darkness, world. Where do you think pornography comes from? I'm, I mean, I, I haven't even thought about it in a long time, but uh, Ann and Vicky were telling me it, it's uh, the, the, the age for pornography right now is like four years old on computers because they can, and they know how to get back there. You know what pornography does? To your mind, to your thinking. Now, don't act like like you ain't never. See, the church acts like we like like. I mean, that's one thing. One prompt thing we have like sex is not a thing. Sex is a thing with everybody. Everybody likes sex. God made it to be that way. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that kick. Or as Joe Biden would say, come on, man. But the church is afraid to talk about it. You know why? Because half the church is caught up in it. What does it do? What does it do? It starts messing with your head so that now you think, you don't think like God thinks about sex. You think of what they think about, what they say about sex. They tell you this is the way women like to be. And you know what? Women act, act it out even though they don't like it. I'm not going to get into that. Stephanie, you're welcome. <laughs> Dear Lord, if it was all adults, I would. I, would, I promise you, I'd tell you. I would. I would, I would. Sex is supposed to be face to face. Communication, intimacy, face-to-face. -face. Nobody gets that but me and her, face-to-face. -face. Communication, nobody. You mess that up, you've just messed up a, the most important relationship that you'll ever have in this life. You just messed it up. You let somebody else tell you how to have a relationship with that person instead of developing a relationship with that person. It's getting mighty quiet in this Presbyterian church. Hallelujah. He is still alive. Truth is the truth. Hallelujah. I'm going to read this so that you will know that what I said was the truth. Ephesians 5.11 And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it's a shame. It's a shame even to speak of those things. That's why I didn't say it earlier. Because it's a shame to speak of those things that are done in secret. Paul said it's, even a, sh it's a shame to even speak about what they do in secret. Y'all looking at me like a cow to Newgate. What I'm telling you is the truth. It is the absolute truth. This is where this country's at. Let me tell you something about uh, the left and how far they've gone. Uh, anybody see? Let's see. I, I, there's two, so, so many award shows. They had lesbian acts on the, what is it? Is it the, it's not the Golden Globes. It's one of the award shows. It's the Emmys. It's the Emmys. Okay, you've seen it. <laughs> Forgive him, Lord. Forgive him. I, 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 I saw it, but I just didn't know what the... I didn't sit down and watch it now. I didn't sit, but I heard about it later. You know what I'm saying? 
But yeah, it was the Emmys. And it was an award show, and they just had the, 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 the most vile. And that's the thing. It's the, uh, they'll do one thing on one side, sleight of hand, sleight of men, wherein they lie and wait to deceive, sleight of hand. They'll do something on one side. Why do people tune in to watch it? See, the church is going to have to wake up and stop acting like we don't like to sin. You got flesh. You like to sin. It's what flesh does. It wants what it wants. It wants it right now. We like to overeat. We like to overspend. We like to flesh out. And until we come to the realization and get honest with ourselves, God can't, God, God is very limited in where He can put us and where He can use us. I'm not saying we give in to it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying exactly the opposite. You admit that you have a problem with it, and then you you ask God to forgive you, and then you let Him walk you through what He needs to walk you through to get past it. John said this, I would that you sin not, but if you do, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sin. That means He's the substitute for our sin. And He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and, and, and. Forgiving is one thing Cleansing is a process. Anybody just step into the shower, do this, and come out? No. You've got to take a rag. You've got to scrub. You've got to get into some unconly parts where the tight spaces get, where the stink gets. Under your armpits, you know what I'm saying? The problem is, is the church doesn't want to go in and take a shower, the washing of water by the word. Washing of water by the word. Did you know that the Jordan, the Jordan River, which means death, Jesus baptized people in the Jordan. You know why? Because it was running water. And when Jesus baptized them, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You go down. It wasn't, just, it wasn't just you identifying with the death, burial, and resurrection. It was a washing. There was running water that went over you and washed away. But that stuff collected in the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is nasty. People go out there and get in the Dead Sea and I, uh uh, not me. Uh uh, no, no, no. I mean, you can't even sink in the Dead Sea because there's no outlet. It just all goes in there. Church, I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how much money you got, it doesn't matter how talented you are, you're going to have to go to the Jordan the place of death, and have it washed away. Doesn't matter if it's racism, feminism, pornography, all the different things. Let's keep reading. Let's get through this real quick. It's a shame to even, uh, verse 13, but all things are reproved and are made manifest by the light. It can't be manifested if there's no light around. Whatsoever does make manifest is light. We're supposed to be light. I don't have time for that. We got to get going. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools. Anybody ever seen a fool walk? Eddie, you ever seen a fool walk? 
A fool, this is what a fool looks like when he walks. <laughs> Ain't looking where he's stepping. Don't know what he's stepping in. Don't know what he's looking into. He ain't looking for nothing. He just. That's not how we walk. We don't walk that way. Walk this way. Talk this way. Oh. See, then you walk circumspectly. Not as fools. Circumspectly means. You know what circumspectly means? It means. I mean, I'm making sure that where I'm about to put my foot is secure. The path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more until a perfect day. You don't know what else out there is going to bite you. You go out there walking like... You're going to get bit. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get envenomated. The snake's going to get you. Lucy. Fur. See, then you walk circumspectly. Now you know what that verse means. Not as fools. Don't walk like a fool. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. In other words, because you walk that way, you are able to see what's going on and you're able to to take advantage of things that others can't do. Right. They can't see it because they're walking like fools. Right. But not you. Where, wherefore you, wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Okay, all right. I'm, understand what the will of, what are you talking about? Understand what the will of the Lord is. If you don't understand what the will of the Lord is, you're going to walk like a fool. So what do I do? How do I do this? What do I do to not walk as a fool? Not walk around stepping everywhere. I mean, I mean, you know, there's big cow patties everywhere. And you're just walking all through it. And you're getting everybody else dirty because when you pick your foot up, I don't know if every, you've ever walked in mud, but when you pick your foot up, there's stuff on your bottom of your foot and it's getting the person behind you dirty. That's the reason why you let them walk ahead. You just go ahead. you got to understand, what, how do you know what the will of the Lord is? And be not drunk with wine, where is in excess? Now, he just used that as, as an example. But the subject, then what he's talking about is excess. What do you do excessively? He didn't, they didn't, I don't think they had herb in these days. Maybe they did, I don't know. Marijuana, pot, you know, that kind of thing. Excess. They did, probably didn't have country music. They probably didn't have rap music. What do you do excessively, excessively, that begins to form the way you think? That brings you into a wind of doctrine. You think rap music doesn't have a message? Why do you think, why do you think that there is such an anti-police culture. I'm not saying that it's rap music. Rap music's bad. No, it's the message that's in rap music. That comes from the heart of the person singing. It ain't got nothing to do with no beat. That beat, that beat just draws demon spirits. No, it don't. There's only so many, how many beats? You, you only have so many beats, right? How many beats are there? And, and as far as timing goes, like in a scale. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it's still finite. It's not, it's not what's in the beat, it's what's in the heart. And just because you don't like it doesn't mean that, there's, that it's the devil. That's like saying every strong-willed woman is a Jezebel. Are you stupid? 
That's what we used to do. We, we used to, uh, oh, Jesus asked questions, so everybody started asking questions. So I started asking questions. What's wrong with you? Are you stupid? Were you born yesterday? I did. I did it just to show them how stupid they were. Because these people were smart. Smart people. Smart people. I had woke up this morning in a dream. And I won't say who the people were. But this is what, this is, I mean, this, I mean, it was, it was so alarming. This guy, there was this guy in the dream, don't know who he was. But he was in, in this dream, he was in with the kids. But this person that's supposed to know about these things said, he's doing harm. So guess what I did? I grabbed my shotgun. Except I don't have a shotgun. I used to have a shotgun, but I don't have one anymore. When he walked out of the room, she said, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Well, I'm protecting the kid. So guess what I done? I put the, I put the shotgun in his face and I shot. In a dream now. In a dream. I shot twice, but nothing came out. I mean, the, the, the powder, everything, but nothing came out. Well, come to find out there was nothing wrong with the person. There was not anything wrong with them. I almost killed somebody. I almost. And, 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 and as the dream went on, I realized, my God, it was a miracle that I didn't kill them. Such are the dreams that I have. We kill people. People have killed people. Churches have killed people. Not even knowing. We won't, we won't, we won't get on. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Whereby, when you, uh, uh, wherefore, uh, be not unwise, but understanding what the Lord, be not drunk with wine words, but be filled with the Spirit. So you can do that by being filled with the Spirit. You can, you can take that same excess and be filled with the Spirit. How is that? Because I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to end here in just a second. Speaking to yourselves, David said this. He was delivered to a horrible pit, an echo chamber. The only way is when that echo chamber begins to echo those words, you've got to start speaking. You've got to, you've got to answer that thing back. Right. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, and singing and making melody in your heart, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you be filled. Be being filled. That actually means be being filled. You got to do it all the time. You don't do it one time and then it, it, it works. It's okay. It's fine. No, you got to do it all the time. Be being filled. The same excess that you have with listening to country music, rap music, whatever, you know, uh, smoking marijuana, uh, drinking alcohol, all that ex excess, whatever it is in your life that, 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 that is the ex excess, you can negate that by being filled because excess is being filled with pornography. Excess is being filled with uh, country music. You listen to country music all the time? Really? I mean, I, I listen to some of it like, okay, uh, I've never been crazy about country music. I've never been really crazy about any music. But you know if you play country music backwards, you know what you get. Yeah, you get your dog back, you get your wife back, you get your house back. You get it all back. And we don't think anything about it because that's just it's, just, it's just normal. And it's just something that we do. It's just, oh, there's nothing wrong with this. Yeah, there is too. He's diabolos. He's throwing a doctrine at you 
the whole time. And most of the time, those doctrines are feel-good doctrines. I got friends in low places. Well, you just need to keep them in low places and you need to rise above those low places. I'm in love with your body. I'm in love with the shape of you. <laughs> Look at Keith back there. He's saying, sing Gaga. Sing Lady Gaga. Do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah. He's back there. He's like, come on, man. Sing Gaga. All right. Did y'all get anything out of this? <laughs> I did. I'm going to start acting right, I reckon. Hallelujah. Y'all stand up. <laughs>